guys. Um, so, so many of you yesterday wanted a math resource um, tutorial type of video today, so that's what it's on. Um, so stay tuned for some things that I do to help make creating some math resources easier and look nicer. I uh, hope you enjoy, hope you learned something, and let's get into it. Okay, so the number one question I get in creating my resources is how I make my fractions or the equations in the equation editor have pretty fonts. So if you go to insert and you go to equation, if I were to choose, let's say an exponent here, I'm just gonna make this big so that you can see it. So I'm going back home, I'm gonna choose 88 fonts just so that you can see what I'm doing. Let's say I write in the exponent two to the fourth power. Now if I go here and choose a different font, nothing is going to happen. It's just gonna stay that ugly font that is standard with any of the equations that you enter. But if I now click on design and click on this button here that says normal text, and now if I go back home, I can choose any font that I like. So I can choose one of my really pretty fonts that I want in here. It doesn't matter which one I choose, it will change it to whatever I want here. Um, so if I were to now insert a fraction, which is what most people have trouble with making their fonts, um, again, I'm just gonna make this big so you can see what I'm doing. Let's say I want the fraction three over four. So now if I go back home and I try to choose a font, it's not gonna change, it's gonna stay the, this ugly font. But I'm gonna go to design, click on normal text, now when I go back, I can choose any font that I want. The only thing that I don't like about this, um, and this is just personal preference, is that the numerator is spaced a little bit higher than the denominator. So I actually prefer to insert a table. So I just insert a table, it's a one by two table. I select everything inside, I go to shading, no fill. I click on the top, so the numerator in this case, or the top part of your table, and I click on bottom border. So now I just have this line here. I'm just gonna make it smaller. And I'm gonna highlight inside, go back home. I'm gonna make sure that my font is black, make sure that it's not bold. I'm gonna choose the font that I want. I'm gonna make it nice and big so you can see what I'm doing. Now when I type in three over four, you can see that it created a, a fraction here. And I just like the way it looks better. I think the fraction looks more neat. And so just two different ways that you can type in fractions that have a better font. Um, next tip that I'm going to give you is how to create graphs in PowerPoint. I only use really basic graphs for seventh grade math. So I create coordinate planes. Maybe I'll create some lines for slope. Um, but I do just an easy table. Let's say I put in here a six by six table. If I now format this, I select all inside, I go to shading, no fill, borders, I want all borders. If I need to change my size, I'm just going to click on this layout tab, and now I'm gonna change my height to half, and my width to a half, so that my boxes are all the same size. Now I just simply have to go into my insert, shapes, select my double arrow. When I draw my arrow, I hold down my shift key, so that way when I drag it, it stays nice and straight. So I have now my Y axis, I'm gonna go back home. So I'm gonna select my double arrow, hold it down. Now I'm selecting both. I held on my shift key and I clicked on both of my arrows. Now I'm gonna select black and I want it to be thicker. So I select my weight and now I have a basic graph coordinate plane. Um, if you want it to be more technical, you could go to insert chart here to create a graph. This is much more complicated if you just want something basic, but I'm just gonna show it to you just so you have an idea if you create like quadratics or anything like that, this is where you would go to create them. I'm not really that familiar with how to create all of those because I don't make those types of resources, but you could do more research on your own, but I'm going to show you how to create a basic coordinate plane using this function. Um, so you go to your XY scatter, um, you can choose any one of these. I'm going to choose scatter with smooth lines and markers and click OK. So it's going to open up not only your graph, but an Excel chart as well. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of these X and Y values so that I have a blank table. In here now, when I go right here for formatting, I'm going to go to my chart area. And 
I want my chart area size to be different. I'm going to make it five by five just so that you can see clearly exactly what I'm doing on my table. Now if I click again, I'm clicking on the hour next to chart options and I'm going to click on my horizontal axis, this little chart. I'm going to click on axis options. I want to make my minimum negative five and my maximum um, five. If I go down here, I want it to go by ones. It just did switch it, but I want it to go by one. So I'm going to select one. This will automatically change for me. And then if I want labels here, this is where I would select it, where I want my labels to be. I can keep them next to my axis. I can choose none if I wanted to, but I'm just going to keep them here for now. Um, now I need to go to my vertical axis. So I clicked right here next to axis options again. I'm going to go to my vertical axis and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make my minimum negative five, my maximum five. I want it to go by ones. So now you can see I have a standard chart here, but I do want my X and Y to be thicker. So I'm just going to go back in my horizontal axis and I'm going to click on the fill bucket. Now I can click on this color. I want it to be black. I can change my thickness and I can change my arrows on both sides. Make sure it's selected on both. And then I go to my other axis. It's my vertical axis. I change my color. I change my thickness. I need to select arrows for both sides. So now I have another basic chart. And if I wanted to put an X and Y values, if I wanted to create a line here, if I put in zero, zero, I put in one, one, you can see it's gonna start building my line based on the values that I input into my Excel chart. And if you wanted to be more technical in here, you could open your Excel file up and go into your formulas and put formulas in. But again, I don't create resources that are that complicated, but if you wanted to, that is how you would. So that's my last tip. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you learned something. And yeah, have a wonderful day. Happy Tuesday. And I will see you and talk to you soon. Bye.